Hey everyone, welcome to Encounters USA. If it's aliens, UFOs, Bigfoot, or dogmen you're looking for, you came to the right place. Now listen up as we listen to some of the latest encounters. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Encounters USA. I'm your host, author, Matthew Hines. Today, we have a great show. We are going to be going over scary, spooky dogman encounters. But before we get into our scary, spooky dogman encounters, I want to remind you, this is the special Dogman or Wolfen Month. Yes, that's right. This is the month that we decide, we choose whether we continue to refer to this scary beast as the Dogman or if we change it to Wolfen. And remember, it's not a dog, it's not a man. So why would we call it Dogman? Wolfen is the more accurate accurate name. So consider that when you're going to the polls, and in this case, leaving comments on our video on YouTube. All right. Now, I also want to mention, since we're talking about YouTube, that we appreciate all the subscribers, excuse me, that we're getting. I mean, we just started a few months ago, and now we're nearing almost the hundreds mark. So it is fantastic, and we really want to thank you and remind you that our videos are not broadcast live. So if you want to get that update when these videos are posted, you have to subscribe and ring that bell. All right, so let's get into our Dogman or Wolfen encounters. And to do that, we want you to relax, turn down the lights, and listen to some of the latest encounters. Bizarre Encounters with Telepathic Dogmen in Mysterious Universe by Brent Swanser. One type of mysterious creature that has gained a bit of a following in recent years is what is commonly referred to as the Dogman. Much as its name suggests, these entities are usually described as being very tall, bipedal, and covered with shaggy hair, much like the more well-known Sasquatch. But in this case, they also have pointed muzzles and features of a very canine nature. Spotted in many regions of the United States, The dogmen are a bizarre phenomenon that manages to teeter where the lines of Bigfoot, werewolves, the paranormal, and urban legend intersect. Yet taking things deeper into the strange are the various reports that suggest these beings utilize the mental power of telepathy as well. One very interesting and quite bizarre such account comes from a witness who posted her experience on the site Truth Seeker Highway and claims that she had a regular telepathic contact with a dogman calling itself Tulak. This entity was first encountered by the witness in a rugged Sandia Mountains in New Mexico, where she was out one fine day with her fiancé, Michael, for a hike. At one point during their peaceful walk, her fiancé suddenly called out to her to be careful of a bear ahead. Looking forward, she saw that he was talking about was a hulking brown shape that could be seen and heard crashing through a thicket. Seeing a bear out there was quite unexpected. But what's even stranger was what allegedly happened next. The witness said of this, As I watched the bear run away, out of some trees to the right of it, 
I saw a very strange, and I mean very strange, person walking opposite of the bear. Its stride was like something I've never seen, especially a normal person do. For every step it took, there must have been four to five feet in between each step, which means that I was looking at something very tall. Its back was hunched over, and at first I thought that maybe he was carrying a backpack. I mean, my mind was going a hundred miles a minute, trying to figure out what exactly I was looking at. Then I realized that it wasn't a backpack, but the man's back. Then I saw how strange the color of the man was. At this point, I had no idea I wasn't looking at a man. Its color was gray, purple, and dark brown. There seemed to be patches of what looked to me purple, but who knows what I was looking at. It didn't turn and look at me, but kept at a very fast pace, walking down what we eventually saw was a path. I said to Michael how weird this fellow was, but he couldn't see him. I then pointed to the location of where he went, and as we walked in that direction, that is when the horrible feeling hit us both in the gut. Something told both of us to stay back. It was a clear message, and one I was willing to ignore, but not Michael. I wanted to go down the path further, but he said it was too dangerous. I must say the feeling in our gut was like a slight punch, almost a nauseating feeling. It affected our heart rates, and our adrenaline was racing. I could feel my heartbeat all over my body. It was at this point that I decided to take photos in the direction the strange hiker had gone. It was in one of these photos that we captured what turned out to be a dog man. He was standing and watching us as we were trying to figure out what to do next. We didn't smell him at all. He didn't have any odor more than any bear did. But I must say, we sure did feel him. Even after they got home, the witness says she maintained a sort of psychic connection with the spooky entity and that she learned a lot of new and surprising things through this. One thing she claimed she was able to glean from her exchanges with Tulak is that despite their fierce appearance, these dogmen are not violent or vicious creatures at all. She would say... Tulak has relayed interesting information to me. The most obvious is that they don't like humans. They understand their place in the forests, and they don't put out their threatening stance to other animals in the forests except when they hunt. As far as how they interact with each other, he stated that they have an understanding with each other. He preferred his solitude and said he particularly didn't stay with any group, but knew where they roamed. He was to me obviously intelligent beyond just a beast in the woods. He distrusted people extremely, as do most cryptids. He didn't go into more detail than this, but I'm pretty sure what we see on TV with werewolves movies isn't even close. <clears throat> Tulak said that he and the large brown bear have been palling around for years. People put human issues and temperaments to other creatures and beings that have nothing to do with them at all. Another account of telepathy and dogmen was given to the site Weak in Weird by a witness calling himself Zay who claimed that he was in regular telepathic contact with dogmen in the rural forests of Pennsylvania in the United States. Similarly to the previous report, Zay has said that these creatures are not violent or malevolent in any way, and that although they are frustrated and displeased with mankind, they hold no ill will or hatred for us. Zay explained of these beings... 
Very few people understand what courage really is. Courage is not about facing a werewolf, because I have visited with a werewolf in a siding area more than once. Courage is not about traversing through dogman areas with guns and ammunition, because I have visited dogman territories numerous times, always alone and unarmed. If I am not worthy to be here, then the dogmen can have me, but I have yet to experience aggression from them, and have had several subtle encounters with dogmen. I have recently discovered a three-toe paw print that was almost as big as the palm of my hand, and was so fresh that the dogman could have been watching me as I passed by. Most people are trapped inside the bubble of their own existences. I reach out to the life around me. I don't write books, nor am I well known. I'm a bachelor that lives a very quiet and private life. And one of the things I love to do is to get acquainted with the unknown. Anger, fear, and arrogance rarely wins anyone friends that are truly trustworthy. The kind of feelings that you emit from your life force are the same ones that are going to be attracted to you. I have literally had dogmen approach me after dark, announcing their presence with sounds that defy what you would reason as being from average animals. I have heard mystical heavy breathing sounds to non-aggressive growls of acknowledgement. I even had a dogman creep up on me for 15 minutes that I was aware of the entire time, and when I sensed that it was very close, perhaps right behind me, I had a black and white telepathic image of a canine head and a snout that came into my mind. It's an amazing world. If given a choice between passing through cryptid territory or gang territory, I would choose Dogman and Bigfoot over humans any day. I have walked through Dogman territories in Pennsylvania before, without fear because I trust them, with a kind of trust that I don't often have for humans. There are very few people in this world I would genuinely trust. I know just how arrogant and angry-spirited people can be. I know quite a bit about angry about my own kind and am far more interested in knowing more about cryptids and protecting their habitats from further human development and destruction. While these reports so far seem to portray the dogman as decidedly benevolent entities, others cast a rather more sinister light upon them. In an article at the Cloaked Hedgehog, a site devoted to dogman and werewolf phenomena, there is a somewhat frightening account relayed by Anna M. K. Larson, who runs the site and appears to have spent quite a bit of time mapping and chronicling dogman sightings and encounters. She has also specifically documented a few accounts of telepathy and dogmen, saying of the phenomenon. When it comes to ESP, I have heard people talk about perceiving the dogman in ways other than through the regular five senses. Many talk about the creature sending them a message telepathically about not to talk about their sighting or else. Many talk about having a distinct gut feeling when these things are around, and some even say they have been sight-jacked, as in them seeing through the eyes of the dogman, and most likely vice versa. She then relays a personal experience she had along with these lines, which points out towards a psychic ability to lash out mentally, and which supposedly happened in the mid-1990s while she was outside her house one evening, stargazing. As she looked up at the blanket of glittering stars across the vast inky canvas of the black sky, she claims that she was suddenly overcome with a heavy sense of dread that seemed to emanate from a small grove nearby. She would say of what happened next, thus, I definitely sensed something was in that grove. 
below the fence, something very, very bad. I felt it like a thousand needles on my skin, and a horrible paralysis and heavy fear overcame me, which seemed to be projected onto me by someone or something else. I heard my own voice in my head say, go inside, do not run, twice. Inside, after calming down a bit, about ten minutes later, I opened the window and almost immediately heard a god-awful howl from the cemetery a block away. The window was closed again, really fast. Larson then goes on to explain that she was routinely subject to some form of psychic attack by the creatures, describing it as being sought out and set upon by tentacles of energy, and most pronounced when she was engaged with research or looking in to the dogman phenomena. According to her, it seems almost as if they do not want to be looked at too closely and that they are trying to scare her off the subject. She has said of this, I have also felt them in the ether, as I call it, while studying the subject. I perceive it as tentacles of energy, searching through the ether, searching for the one searching them. The more I read and studied, the more I could perceive them coming closer. Sometimes I took breaks when I felt them coming too close. While working on those maps of dogman sightings two years ago, things got really intense for a long time. Months of reading about and mapping dogman reports for at least 16 hours a day. I felt the tentacles. I ignored them. I wanted to finish the maps. One day there was a connection made. I could feel it so distinctly. Contact. They had found me. Luckily, I understand that they had only found me mentally. They still didn't know where I physically was. Yet, after this experience, I have become more afraid of the dark. I have had some weird experiences with a mirror in my bedroom that I finally had to get rid of. I don't care or dare to look out a window at night anymore. Sometimes I force myself because I will not live in fear of them. But damn, it's hard now. Also rather ominous in a sense was the account given by Bigfoot and Dogman researcher Parker Duvall on an episode of Coast to Coast AM called Bigfoot and Dogman with host Connie Willis. Duvall has spent years studying the dogman phenomenon in his home state of Kentucky and told Willis that he has made telepathic contact with a dogman named Roger and has created a relationship with the entities. According to Duvall, the dogman are a warrior-like race that utilize an ability to fill humans with terror and a primal fear as this is apparently the state in which people learn the most about themselves. He also sent the program several images of what he claims were one of the dogman and a couple that were of the aftermath of dogman attacks on livestock. It is hard to know just what to make of such accounts or to discern just how much truth any of these may have, but they certainly do add a new, weird dimension to the already bizarre phenomenon of the dogman. These creatures are quite entrenched in the outer fringes of cryptozoology, seemingly defying any sort of biological explanation as it is. And these accounts of accounts of weird telepathic abilities further make this an area in which we largely have no idea of what we might be dealing with, whether we are looking at werewolves, thought forms, demons, ghosts, or something else entirely. The dogman phenomenon most certainly seems to get odder and odder and shows no signs of waning. Northeast Pennsylvania Dogman Encounter 
posted by Black Cats Black Bats on Reddit. I have shared this story in previous threads as part of the general conversation. I haven't made an individual post until now. I'm a little bit older than most folks here, mea culpa. I'm posting from mobile, so I'll try to be brief and to the point. Also, I need to leave the name of the specific town out, as it would be a dead giveaway to my identity. I've always been into the paranormal, as most of us that visit this thread are. In January 2019, I noticed something lumbering down my driveway. The window I was looking out faces over and above the drive, if that's clear. For example, I can see the roof of your car, but not always the bottom of the tire. Regardless, I notice movement. I look out and see what I initially thought was a bear, nose to the ground, kind of snuffling its head to the side, casually walking down the drive on all fours. A little geographical clarity. I live in town. The front of my neighborhood faces a major highway, but the back is all state game land. I've seen some wildlife, turkeys, a deer here and there, and every skunk in the county apparently lives on my street. I don't see many squirrels, groundhogs, or chipmunks, which is a bit odd. I'm not very far from the city of Scranton, about seven miles from downtown, so I'm not exactly in the sticks. I watch this bear mosey down the street, its head lowered. I moved from the living room toward my bedroom window that has a full view of the street. Sure enough, here it comes. But something is wrong. I watch this not bear stand on two legs and casually walk out onto the road. I see pointed ears and a long snout. Its head got raised, smelling the air. I felt pee run down my legs. This was no bear. I saw it in perfect silhouette under the yellow street light. It was either dark, gray, or black. The yellow light threw off the true color. It stood without effort, looked like one fluid movement. It then walked across the road, casual as you please, and kind of hunkered down in some kind of scrub brush. I'm not sure what kind of brush, but it's like Forsythia, all tangled and thick. Then I realized it was looking right into my bedroom. It had blue eyes. I'm not sure if that was reflected light or if they were glowing. It looked right at me. I lost my legs at that moment and sat down under my window. Absolutely panicked. I was home alone with five cats and a dog who slept through the whole thing. I didn't know what to do. My window is a big picture window, and if it wanted me, it could have easily gotten me. I cautiously got on my knees to peek over the sill, and I lost it. Didn't see eyes or it anywhere. It seemed to be either moving away from the forest behind my house, or it decided to rest up in that scrub brush. What I saw under the street light is as follows. Darkish fur, high pointed ears, long muzzle. I never saw teeth or if it had a tail. It had hands with long claws that hung kind of limp wrist. If they were fully extended, they would hang below the knee. It walked digitigrade on dog legs. It looked heavily muscled but had a tapered waist. It was about seven to seven and a half feet tall, judging from where it stood in relation to the street light. It was non-aggressive, even when I felt it look right at me. I was terrified, but I didn't get a sense that it was pissed off as if it had been, as some people report. I didn't take a picture because I simply didn't think to. I was in a fair amount of shock, and I'm sure I'll eat crap for this, but sometimes your phone 
is the absolute last thing on your mind. There have been some odd sounds, tapping at my window. I can hear scratching on the siding. I don't see that many animals around the neighborhood. There used to be about seven stray cats I fed, all gone. Once the weather broke, it's been quiet. I installed motion lights and bought two game cameras. I'm hoping they're in a sense like Sasquatch. They avoid game camps. I don't ever want to see this thing again. Those of you who want to see one, pray you never do. My encounter was non-aggressive. I can't imagine having to deal with this thing pissed off. I still can't sleep a full night, and every sound scares the hell out of me after dark. I live alone, and the 357 I own would probably just ruffle its fur. Thank you for taking the time to read this. It was a terrifying animal to see. I hope I never see it again. But sadly, that wasn't in the cards. I'll post that story another time. Be careful out there, rando redditors. You never know what's out there waiting. Another disturbing thought. If Dogman is real, what else is? Dogman Encounter, posted by Deluxiest. Dogman Encounter in Michigan by Deluxiest. I saw one run behind my car in Michigan years ago. Totally freaked me out. I had stayed at my friend's place by Lansing for a couple of weeks and decided to take off and head towards the shore of Lake Michigan, up through Petoskey and over to the UP. It was dark by the time I got to Pentwater, a small resort town on the shore of Lake Michigan in the western part of the state. I was kind of confused at a stop sign, and I lurched to a stop, started, and stopped. I looked up, and there was no police officer stopped to my right. I decided to make a right turn, then turn into my neighborhood. I made my way back to the main road and took a right. As I turned back onto the main road, I saw a small hill going up into a wooden area on the left. I saw some sort of animal in the grassy area between the road and the trees. I thought to myself, oh cool, I'm going to see some wildlife, like a possum or a badger or something. But as I got near it, it seemed to move in a very unnatural way. For an animal like that. Sort of too fast and too jerky as it ran to the side and then down the hill. It appeared to be brown and reddish tobacco colored and furry. It looked much larger, more like human size. After I passed it, I looked up in my rear view. The animal had stood up on its hind legs and ran across the street, leaning, leaning over with its front arms, hanging down. Classic werewolf-type horror movie pose. I had been planning on camping out in that area, but no way. I drove over two hours before I stopped. Running with a dog man. Posted by Stuck Far Wars. Posting all over looking for answers. I saw a thing in or near the woods on three separate occasions now. Each time I saw the thing, it was in a different state along the east coast of America. And each time the sighting was fleeting. I'm in my 30s now, and the sightings have several years between them. The first time I saw it was in high school, and this is most definitely the time I got the longest look at it. The second time I only got a glimpse, and I'm pretty sure it was the same thing. The third time I got a clear look at it from a distance, but it caught me so off guard 
that I stumbled as I was taking a step and I lost sight of it. I have been calling it a thing because I have no idea what it is. And quite honestly, I don't even have a good guess either. It was not a Sasquatch, a wild man, a rake, a lizard person, or any other creature I have found through my incredibly frustrating recent internet research on the subject matter. Maybe a shapeshifter of some kind, because the first time I saw it, the thing changed its form for sure. Yes, I said, it changed its form. You can go ahead and leave now if you like. If you are someone like me that will rely on science for validation, you try to keep an open mind. But you also tend to explain away people's paranormal encounters for any number of different reasons. Also, I would have expected that if I ever did end up seeing something otherworldly, it might be something that someone else had seen before, right? I might see something I recognize from television or movies, and I might say, look up there, that's a UFO, or holy cow, a ghost, or dang, is that Bigfoot kill it? This thing, though, y'all, is... This thing is so surreal and so deranged looking. I'm really at a loss. This post is the first time I have put any of this out there to anyone. And if it weren't for this last encounter, I would have forgotten the first two again. I have never mentioned this to anyone because of how ridiculous it sounds. The fact that I have no proof... And the fact that I am known as a muckabout, I'm pretty much exactly the person you would think might make something like this up. At this point, though I only want to get this off my chest to hopefully find out if anyone else has ever seen this thing. Before I begin to tell you what happened, I would like to make it clear that I swear what you read here is the truth about what I saw as best as I can remember. If you don't believe it, fine. Whatever, I get that. This is the reason I'm posting the what happened here and it is the reason I have never and will never tell anyone I might have to see in my daily life. I'm sure they would think I'm crazy or just desperate for attention because what I saw is downright absurd. Well now, that I have thoroughly destroyed any credibility I may have once had, I will tell you what I saw as best I can. I've been thinking about how exactly I might explain this to someone a while now, so I'll do my best to keep out of a narrative tone. Well, now that I have thoroughly destroyed any credibility I might have once had, I will try to explain the details I saw as bluntly as possible with as vivid of a recollection as I have of the events. First sighting, Southern New Hampshire, 2000 or 2001, summer probably, don't remember exactly when, well after midnight. I'm going to take some time to explain this first encounter in as much detail as I can recall, even though it all happened so fast, literally lasting a total, maybe 10 seconds, it is still the longest amount of time I have spent truly looking at the thing. I was walking to a friend's house from the apartment complex I lived in late at night. To get from one place to the other quickly, you had to cut through a small patch of forest roughly a hundred yards, that was technically someone else's property. A couple of times before, we had someone shine a light on us, and once he fired a shot in the air to try and scare us in an attempt to get us to stop cutting through. But it didn't stop us. It did, however, teach me to be stealthier when cutting through, and so on this night... I was creeping very quietly through the trees as I went. 
The forest was in a valley between my apartment complex, some houses, and the neighborhood where my friend lived. The valley dipped down in the middle with a steep incline surrounding it, and so at first I had to go down into the valley, and then at the end I would walk up out of the valley, exiting the tree line right onto the street where his house is. Once exiting the tree line, one would be standing on the side of the street with the end of the road about a half a mile to your right and the entrance to the neighborhood about the same distance on the left. The houses were spaced adjutantly and apart uh, equally, so the night was very dark except for the area around the houses and a couple of light circles under the orange street lights, of which there were very few for the amount of space. I got through the valley with no problem this time, and I got up some speed to go up the hill in front of me, where the forest ended maybe five feet from the edge of the street, if the event that far. At the exact moment, I came out of the tree line and onto the edge of the road. Something caught my eye to the left of me, emerging from the woods across the street. It stumbled awkwardly out of the woods and into the view right at the edge of the circle of orange light radiating down from one of the street lights. At first, and for just a brief moment, it looked like a shadow. However, I heard a sound coming from the dead leaves beneath its feet, and I quickly realized that it was not a shadow. Its body shape was like that of a starving child, maybe three feet tall, that you might see in a third world country, but its legs and arms were so thin that there appeared to be no way it could support the creature's body weight. It was dark from what I can remember. At the end of its frail looking limbs were just nubs, no hands and no feet that I saw. Its movements were the creepiest part, honestly. They were the first thing that threw me off. I couldn't even really explain how absurd and unnatural its movements were, or how it was standing on those tiny legs. It moved forward from the trees and toward the street extremely awkwardly with the couple of steps that I saw it take. It was almost as if it was not supposed to be walking around like that, but it had somehow figured out a way to do so regardless. The thing was roughly two or three feet tall with an enlarged light bulb shaped head and a little belly in spite of how thin the rest of its frame was. In addition to its shape and motion, the thing seemed unreal mostly, because it didn't seem to reflect any light at all when it stepped into the light of the street lamp. It appeared to have no three-dimensional form at all, with its body almost blending right into its shadow, and I could really only tell it had solid form by the way that it moved and navigated the environment around it. I froze in place instantly when I saw it with my brain unable to even process what I was seeing. In a couple of steps, it exited the trees, stumbled across the patch of grass to the street, and then sort of fumbled down forward toward a sewer drain on the side of the road. I'm not sure what I did, if anything, but as soon as it hit the curb, it rose back up and looked over at me. I couldn't see its face or anything at all, still just this bizarre black shape moving so unbelievably awkwardly. I really couldn't stress this enough. Its movements were ridiculously uncoordinated. What happened next is what sent me fleeing into the woods with all the cowardice that has kept me alive to this day. Upon seeing me, this malformed, shadow child thing did this quick, twisted turn toward me, dropping down to all fours and becoming a much more animal-like shape when it did. I again have no idea how to describe the motion as it was so unnatural, 
but when its turn was complete, the thing had become something I can only describe as a shadow cat dog bear. I know that sounds crazy, but I can't describe it any other way than that. It stood on all fours like a predatory animal, but I couldn't make out any definition on it with the way it didn't catch the light that it was standing directly below. This thing, it didn't just go from being human-like to being a human on all fours. I mean, it generally became something else as far as I can tell. I debated leaving this next part out because it just slices into the credibility of the events even further, but it happened, and so here goes. As soon as the creature had hit all fours and was no longer humanoid, its eyes flashed yellow at me and it let out a loud shriek, not a growl, not a bark, not a snarl, not an animal-like roar or even a hissing, but a legitimate shriek that sounded like neither a person nor an animal. The sound started quiet, then it rose quickly, almost as if it was winding up or under pressure and just painfully been forced out of the creature's mouth that great anguish. Its scream had a certain harshness to it as if it might have had something seriously wrong with its vocal cords or had just smoked a million cigarettes consecutively. I remember the thing had a weird, almost scared vulnerability to the sound it made, which contrasted the harshness and tone as well as the defensive stance the creature took. All this took place in just a few seconds, maybe ten at most, from the time the thing exited the tree line to the time it turned, postured, shrieked at me, and sent me running without a single thought in my head right back into the woods. I didn't stop. I didn't look back. I did not try to be quiet through the forest. I just ran as fast as I could. That is correct. I was so scared, I ran back into the dark, scary woods to get away, only realizing how dumb that was sometime afterward. The sound it made chilled me to my core. Then, but now in hindsight, I think the flashing eyes bother me more than the sound because it seems so expected. The flashing glowing eyes trope is precisely what I have heard in so many other people's stories I have never believed about mysterious creatures they claim to have encountered. I mean, because that is what scary things in the night do, right? They flash yellow eyes and make a scary shrieking sound at you. Obviously, what else would they do? I never made it to my friend's house that night, and I never mentioned this to anyone ever since. I managed to forget about this experience pretty quickly although I'm not sure how my life was high drama at the time. So I'm sure it is because I did something stupid. And that took over my world. Second Sighting, Central Florida, 2006. Spring, I believe. Early night, around 8 p.m. The second sighting is much briefer, and as I mentioned before, I am 90% sure... It was the same thing, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll keep this short and tell you simply that I was out camping, went for a walk along a, ta- a trail, and watching my girlfriend hop from rock to rock across the river. I heard a sound to my left, and when I turned to look, I saw an extremely thin, skinny, black nub leg, possibly a tail, disappear behind a tree as if an animal running away from something. I ran over this time, but I found nothing, and I didn't mention it to my girlfriend. No experiences or weird sounds that night, and no more encounters for several years. If you like more detail about this one, you can attempt to to email me with any questions 
and I will try to remember. Third sighting, Eastern Shore of Virginia, June 8, 2019, late night, around 11 p.m. Well, finally, here's the reason I felt I had to put this out there, and the reason I am so freaked out by this thing. It's not so much what happened last week, as it was another quick glimpse, and nothing else, but instead, it is the fact that it happened again to me, and as far as I know, no one else. Last week I was at a party at a friend's house, celebrating her birthday because she is one of those people in their 30s that still gets excited about those things. I don't drink, so I was not drunk, but in the interest of total transparency, I have been known to partake in the occasional medicinal herbal supplement for recreational purposes. You can take that information however you like. My friend lives with her husband in a farmhouse surrounded by open fields for a couple of acres in any direction surrounded, of course, by a thick forest. I had been there for a while, and the thing was the furthest thing from my mind. We were all just hanging out and rambling on about the usual inane BS. I decided that I wanted to smoke, and so I went out the front door and onto the porch. I stepped forward and went to step down the front steps to get a little more space. And as I did, I glanced up and looked out into the field in front of the house. There it was. Roughly 50 yards out and bumbling through the field toward the trees. For a split second, I could see the unmistakable shape of this weird shadow child thing. It was just the same as before, large head and belly, unbelievably thin arms and legs, and again reflecting absolutely no light at all. I was mid-step when I glanced up and lost track of where I was stepping, causing me to fall forward. I managed to catch myself as I fell barely, and I must have made a sound when I did, because when I looked back up, the thing was on all fours quickly running off like a dog into the woods. I reiterate, this thing did not move on all fours like a person in any way, but it moved like an animal with knees bent backward. I was too far and it happened too fast for me to tell if it had hands and feet this time. I started to walk out and look around a bit when someone came outside. And not wanting to tell anyone, I just went back to the party. I must have been the distant the rest of the night, because I couldn't get it out of my head this time. I ended up leaving the party relatively early and went home to start obsessing about it, as I have been for about a week now. So, I'm sufficiently freaked out by a lot of things about what I've seen. Even discounting the second sighting, I got two brief but good looks at something that I cannot explain. One of the things that bothers me the most about this is, why me? Why, as far as I know, I've been the only one to see this thing. If it knows of me and is following me or something like that, then why does it seem surprised? By my presence each time I've seen it and then enter a sort of fight or flight mentality, If it doesn't know of me, then why am I the only one to see this thing, and now in three different states years apart? I'm writing this over a few days now to make sure I have got all the details as best as I can remember, and I hope I'm not the only one that saw this creepy little guy. What I saw that night was so unnatural, I never expected to see anything like it in my life. It honestly just did not belong to our physical reality, and it almost did not even seem to fit in the environment around it as if it's something 2D superimposed into an authentic 3D background. I looked into shadow people videos and sightings, but I don't think this was that as there was nothing ghostly about what I saw. It was there and had solid form. This thing, y'all, this frickin' thing, 
was so out of place, but at the same time I saw it there and heard it as well. I don't know what else to say about it. Each time, except the second, I could see enough of it that I could tell it was not somebody messing with me, and I could see enough of it to say to it it did not belong here in the world with us. My best guess at this point is that I crossed each other's past in a possible interdimensional rift or time slip only because of how surreal the experience was. I know that sounds crazy, but it is all I've come up with to rationalize the fact that this thing did not fit into its surroundings in any way. It did not even look like it was made to move and get around in this world. The force of gravity should have for sure crushed its skinny legs under the weight of its body. It was like an eggplant on toothpicks. That is all that there is time for me to tell, but I sincerely hope someone else saw something like this. So I know I am not starting to lose it. At this point, I only want to know that I am not alone and that what I saw has some explanation. Rational or not, I don't care. Please just give me something to go on. I need one reasonable answer from somewhere at this point because I know what I saw and I can't get the way this thing moved or how dark it was out of my head. Bear Dogman Interaction posted by Torvosaurus It's not too often one reports seeing or having indications of a cryptid with a normal animal. If they are believed to be real, however, humans can't be the only things they interact with, and not every animal out there is vulnerable. This was not a report I myself witnessed, but instead one my grandmother told me about that my aunt later corroborated independently. So I think they're trustworthy. At the time, I'll note, there wasn't much talk of dogmen, as this was about a decade before the infamous song came out. Though there was talk of werewolves or werewolf-like monsters in Appalachia for a long time, so my aunt and grandmother just always called it that wolf thing creature. For a little backcountry, my background, my grandparents, currently aunt's home, is in backwoods of western Grayson County, Virginia, which to this day is still sparsely populated outside of one or two large towns on the east side, and back then it was even less so. Extremely thick forest with hilly terrain in all directions. You have to get on a dirt path and follow it for about half a mile to get to a gravel-covered side road and then follow it for about 30 minutes to reach a very small town just across the North Carolina border. If you go a short ways north, you find yourself at the Blue Ridge Mountains and parkways that lead up into Appalachia property. The forest is mostly low-lying shrubs up to around four feet high with pine and a lot of black oak trees making up the canopy. There is a very clear stream about 30 yards from the house which has fish quite frequently. This along with wild blackberries, tender leaf shrubs, and some apple trees make it very lucrative for wildlife. The house itself is an old story house built onto an incline of this hill that looks over it. This was back in the 1970s. My aunt believes it was 1978 as she was finishing high school at the time. My father had graduated from college and was going on to the Air Force, so he had already moved out. My grandfather, although he was old enough to retire, liked to remain busy, so he worked his old job as an electrician and power pole technician, just now in an advisory role because he was getting up there in years. He had just gotten the contract down in North Carolina 
so he was away from the house for about a week and a half. This left only my 17-year-old aunt and grandmother at, my, at the house. As I said, there was usually a lot of wildlife in the area. A typical morning for my grandmother was making breakfast and sitting out on her porch watching deer and rabbits eat at the shrubs. Sometimes she would also see or hear a bobcat, fox, or coyote about. On one occasion, a mountain lion and her cub strolled right past the house. One animal she was familiar with, in particular, was a very large black bear who could be recognized by folks around those parts from a white patch on his chest and a hole in his left ear. My grandmother nicknamed him Captain because he had a habit of sitting on his hunches and reaching up with his paws to pick apples, a motion that looked like he was saluting. Captain was a very big black bear, but wasn't very aggressive unless tested. He seemed to have an agreement with my grandmother and grandfather that if they left him alone, he would leave them alone. He just strolled by the house every now and then to have some blackberries on the bushes or apples that had fallen down, which meant he came by the house's yards often as he was too big to climb trees much more and the fruit trees around the house were low enough he could reach up and pick food. My grandfather guesstimated he was somewhere in the 500 to 600 pound range and roughly six feet tall as my grandfather once measured some scratch marks he left on a tree. During the week, my grandmother noticed a fairly sharp decline in the animals nearby. It was the latter part of the summer in a wet season, so most of the plants were full bloom and the leaves were at their tenderest. Yet she couldn't see hide nor hair of any rabbits or deer coming to graze. A coyote she had yapping every night for the past month seemed to vanish. A few neighbors, by neighbors I mean people who lived within five miles, who stopped by, told her something had taken their dog and their chicken coop had been smashed into. They assumed the mountain lion that lurked about had done it since it was the only other thing that could feasibly take down a large farm dog, as they had seen Captain, the only other predator nearby, big enough to take down an 80-pound farm dog the day after in a completely different area, gorging himself on a dead deer. They checked around and couldn't find anything. The next night, my grandmother was woken by my aunt, who told her that she heard something bang against the outside of her wall. They checked around in the morning after and found one of the deer butchered with a bloody smear on the wall. Judging from the way the gravel was distur disturbed, the deer had been walking by the house when something ambushed it and in the struggle it got smacked against the wall. My grandmother, having grown up in the woods, was familiar with predator kid kills and methods. Mountain lions tend to jump on the back and rake their claws across the flanks to hold on as they bite the neck. Black bears will usually break the neck or the back with their paws while biting the head. And the rare occasions coyotes attack deer, they usually do it by biting down on the inside of the leg and twisting to rip the muscles and arteries. This kill clearly had the throat ripped out, but there weren't any claw marks to be found, and the bite looked narrower than what a cougar could do. Plus, she could gander there was only one predator from the way the ground had been disturbed which didn't make sense for coyotes, as they typically hunt in pairs since just one alone isn't usually enough to bring down a full-grown deer. After disposing of the carcass, the next few nights were relatively uneventful, except for the fact several times my aunt or grandmother would be woken up in the middle of the night by the sound of something panting outside. Now in these woods you can hear a pin drop if it's close enough, and at some points they could swear the animal making the painting was directly outside the wall. 
One day, my grandmother was picking some berries when she noticed something that looked like dog tracks of a very large hound going through a mud flat bordering the nearby stream. Thinking it might be the missing farm dog who had maybe just run away, she followed the tracks until she heard something loudly growling at her from across the stream. She looked up to see the partially obscured face of what looked like on large, bulky, brown-colored coyote or wolf standing in a thicket on the other side of the stream. She quickly began to back away, glancing back only to check her footing on the slope that led down the stream. When she looked back, she saw the very distinctly canine face in much greater detail because the animal had moved out from under cover. But instead of stepping out of the leaves like she thought it did at first, she soon noticed that it was instead standing up on its hind legs and peering over the shrubs. Now she had seen canines stand up right before. Dogs do it. Foxes can do it. Coyotes sometimes do it. It was the size that took her off guard. She had been to the exact same thicket of shrubs just the other day, and her head only just barely reached the top, and my grandmother was around five foot three. This thing had its head pitched clear over the shrubs with a little bit of extra visible. And usually, when a predator is making no attempt to hide, it's usually because it's trying to imitate someone. My grandmother managed to pull back away from the hill without turning around, and when she started to get out of the creature, stepped out of the thicket on its hind legs. It strolled forward in a very uncanny way. She had trouble describing it, but she insisted it never went back down on all fours. Needless to say, she ran to the house in a backpedal sprint. That night they heard the panting again, along with a distant howl and scraping sounds. They found the garage door, back door frame, and kitchen window frame all had clock marks on them from something investigating them. The canine creature was seen a few more times across the week by my grandmother and the neighbors, usually on or near the area of my family's property. My aunt finally saw it when she saw a pair of fuzzy ears outside her window. Now, she wasn't startled right off the bat from this, as Captain had come by her window a few times before, and she gradually lost some fear of the big bear over the years. But in this case, his ears just barely reached the edge of the window seal, whereas in this case, you could clearly see them in the top of their owner's head. She quickly realized it wasn't the bear because of the pointed shape. brown coloring and the fact it had two fully intact ears. They also had started to detect a very pungent smell on a side door porch. One time finding what looked like some urinal or some other liquid stains on it, suggesting an animal had scent marked it to claim the spot. It all came to a head on Wednesday night when they heard howling in the distance grow closer. My grandmother flipped on a porch light and glimpsed the canine animal, sprinting across the lawn on its hind legs again, her sighting confirming how big it was. She'd seen timber wolves at the zoo up to 150 pounds, and she was certain this was at least a bit more than twice that size. For several hours of the night, they could hear it roaming around the property and pressing against doors like it was trying to find a way in. They glimpsed at several points, eye shine of yellow eyes in through the windows, as well as broad, long-fingered paws being pushed against the glass briefly. This was the day and age before cell phones and 24-hour police surveillance in some rural areas, so no one had any means of immediately calling the police. Instead, my grandmother had to wait arduous minutes on a dial line with connection difficulty, trying
trying to call the police station two towns over. She was distracted by my aunt screaming, running into the bedroom to get one of the guns out. She'd been sitting in the living room when she felt clicking against the glass and saw that wolf thing pressing its face and bared its teeth against the surface with its claws fully stretched. Both of them started to try to get the rifles or shotguns out. It was becoming increasingly clear the creature was trying to get into the house and knew they were in there. They heard it panting through a wall before there was the sound of heavy footsteps and a very loud thump with a flash of fur on the edge of the window. They ran to the innermost room, the pantry locker, and stayed in there with the guns. Now, it's not like in the movies when the creatures roar, snarl, and hiss constantly no matter what they're doing, but they did hear a commotion outside. My aunt and grandmother hadn't the faintest idea what was going on and didn't investigate until the morning after. But they could tell something was antagonizing. Something... Something as occasional grunts, barks, and rumbles were audible through the blackness for about a minute and gradually moved off. They found no bodies, but there had been a ferocious altercation. The ground was ripped up in multiple spots. The wall had a dent in it, and there were some oxidized blood traces on the grass and dirt. My grandmother also found a trail where something had charged through the shrubs and recovered several dog prints as well as wider tracks moving the same direction. The animals all seemed to come back by the end of the week, and the howls stopped. When my grandfather came back home, he, my aunt, and some neighbors surveyed the area to make sure they couldn't find the wolf creature. Evidently, the neighbors had also heard howls around their property at night that stopped recently, too. They couldn't find it despite surveying the whole property, though they did find what looked like a track way leading out of the property and running off into the mountains. Several days later, my grandmother saw Captain again, marking his territory by rubbing up against a tree in their yard and scratching the bark. He had several cuts across his muzzle, was missing patches of fur, had some healed bite wounds on his arm, and the hole in his ear had been torn open to the point he was missing half the ear flap. But other than that and a slight limp, that went away with time, he was fine. My aunt joked he looked rather proud of himself. When he was told about the urine smell on the doorstep, when the wolf creature was running amok, my grandfather speculated he was trying to claim the territory. Usually black bears are relatively docile, but evidently Captain took issue with this newcomer imposing on his face and became aggressive. So what my grandmother and aunt heard that one night was the bear charging while it was distracted and engaging the intruder. While the wolf-looking creature was taller, It seemed skinnier and less massive, and apparently in a confrontation and threat, displays like that followed. Sheer bulk won out. Apparently it decided it wasn't worth claiming this spot if it meant having to square off with a quarter ton of claws and teeth for it. Captain had run the intruder off to protect his territory and coincidentally help my family as a thank you, and so he could recover his strength quicker. My grandmother trimmed the apple trees to down all the fruit and let the bear enjoy himself without feeding him directly. Winter would be in a few months, and she wanted him fattened up so he could stick around for the next year, just in case. As she put it, the forest will always have a boss, and it's better to have one who's not interested in eating you. Decades have gone by, and while both my grandparents and Captain have passed, the dogman creature never returned. There's been about three black bears who've moved into Captain's place since, and each has grown up about as big as he was. Thankfully, that seems to have been enough to ward off any large 
canines. Oh boy, those were some amazing encounters, weren't they? Those were really, really scary. I'm going to have goosebumps and nightmares for at least a couple days. And it's not even Halloween yet. Oh, boy. Well, my friends, that's it. That's our show for today. And I want to encourage you once again, if you haven't done so, please subscribe and ring that bell so that you can get notified when we have new content out. Now, coming up uh, with Halloween approaching, we are going to have a wonderful show with Jackie Tonk. She is going to come back and talk to us from an actual haunted house. It's going to be amazing, and that's going to be coming up next week. And the week after that, we are going to have a famous, scary author, Peter Laws, on. So don't forget to miss that show, and that will be right on Halloween. So it's going to be amazing stuff. So don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. All right, then. So I have to tell you guys, it's getting colder. The summer is gone. The world is turning brown. And everything is getting a big chill. So when you're outside, always watch your back. Thanks for listening to tonight's show. Please remember, if you've had an encounter, we want to hear about it. Go ahead and email us at EncountersUSA numeral one at gmail.com or contact us at encountersusa.com our website and go to the contact form all right everybody until next time be careful out there and if you're out in the woods watch your back